All right, so I'm going to walk you through making a cover for your Facebook timeline. Uh, this is what we're going to end up making, or something very similar to it. So what we're going to do, start out by hitting File, New. You can also do this by hitting Command if you're on a Mac, or Control and N. Facebook timeline is 850 by 315, so we're going to hit OK and start up. All right, so I went ahead and I found some images earlier in Chrome since I've already made this. I have a nice quote here by Albert Einstein. So what I'm going to do is copy this. And then I'm just going to put it on a text layer here. I'm going to click on the text tool. Shortcut for that is just hitting T on the keyboard. Now the thing with the text tool is if you just click, it'll start the cursor there. You can paste and you can see that it makes that nice text line there. However, if we do it differently, we'll have more control over the text later. You want to click with the text tool and drag. You're going to be making a bounding box for the text. Do that, and then you paste in. And you can see that if we're going to have to squeeze our texts into other spaces later, it's going to morph its shape to that bounding box. So this gives us a lot more control over the text. But we're going to get to that later, so let's just hit OK and confirm this text changes. Move this over here, and let's just blind it out for now. All right, so let's build our background, starting with uh, star field. We'll go back into Chrome. And grab our star field here, which I don't have. There it is. We're going to copy this, and we're just going to paste it right in here. Uh, whenever you have a image on your clipboard, just hitting Command or Control V uh, is going to paste it right in at size in Photoshop. Now, this is a little big and these stars are a little too prominent for us, so let's shrink this image down. Uh, you can do this by going up to Edit, Free Transform, and you can see that the shortcut is Command or Control T. Now when this happens, you'll see this bounding box appear around the image. This image goes off the canvas, so the bounding box is as well. Now I'm going to zoom out so we can see this. Shortcut is, again, either Control or Command, and plus or minus to zoom in to the canvas on Photoshop. Once you're zoomed out, uh, or anywhere else in Photoshop, if you hold space, you'll see the cursor can changes to a hand, and you click and drag, you can move around the view. Just makes things easier for you. So here's the bounding box of that image. Uh, while you're in the transform mode, nothing really happens until you click this checkbox up here to save the changes. Um, but let's fool around with the size a bit. Now if you grab onto the sides, any of these open square boxes, you can see the cursor changes. And that's going to be to transform the box if you click and drag. However, if you just go ahead and do it manually, you'll see that the image kind of starts to get squished because human hands are imperfect. If you look up at the top left here, this is going to be telling you the proportions of your bounding box the whole time. So right now we've shrunk it to 98% of the width and 91% of the height. If you click this chain, what it's going to do is it's going to make it the same for both, so it'll keep the image at size no matter how much you wiggle around. If you don't want to click that chain every time, a shortcut to doing that is holding shift while you're doing one of the bounding boxes. Uh, actually only the corner ones work, the middle does not. But if you do this, it will do the same thing. So we're going to shrink this down, command or control and plus, and hold space to get this hand as we're zooming in. I'm going to get it to about the size of the document before it disappears like that. And we can move it and get the best distribution of stars. I think that's looking pretty nice. So we're going to, you can either hit check or you can hit enter and turn to set that. So now we have our star field background. Now it's looking okay, but the stars are a little too vibrant 
for my taste, but I don't want to lose the color completely. So what I'm going to do is go up to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, which you can also pull up by Command and U or Control and U. It's going to pop up this box. Now by default, this box is set to Master, which means it's going to affect all the colors at once. If we wanted to just change the color of these stars, we could just drag this slider, and you can see the colors start to change up. You can also see the numerical value changes in the hue, so it makes it really easy to drop it back to where you started. I just want to get rid of a little bit of the vibrancy of these colors, so I'm going to drop the saturation down just a bit. And the whiteness down a bit as well, get rid of some of those fainter stars. And you can hit OK. Alright, so we've got our star field. Next, let's get Einstein in there as well, since he's the star of our show. There he is. Let's copy that image. And then Control and V to paste him in. All right, so he's a little too big for our uh, our image at the moment, so let's shrink him as well. Um, well, it looks like our stars aren't all the way over, so we're just going to nudge that with the arrow keys. Uh, looks like we actually shrunk it a little too much. I'm going to cheat and stretch it just a bit here with free transform. And no one's any the wiser. All right, so let's turn Einstein back on over here. It's not a phrase I ever thought I'd be out of ring, but there you go. I'm going to hit Control and T, or Command and T, to get the transform going on Einstein. I'll hold Shift while we click on this corner bounding box. I'm going to drag him down until most of him is in the image. Nudge it over with the arrow keys. And hit Enter to accept the changes. Now, Einstein is also, it should be a black and white photo, but it's got a little bit of tinge of color going on, so let's just get rid of that so we have a nice grayscale image to work with. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate, which you can also do with Shift and Control U, Shift Command U, and we'll drop it down to the black and white. Now over here we have this sharp edge to the photo that's kind of ruining the illusion of the wonderful collage we're trying to make here in Photoshop. Now I would go in and start erasing this, but I don't have as much trust in my hand as I used to, and I don't want to destroy any part of this photograph and then not be able to use it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a mask. Masks are very powerful in Photoshop. Click on the layer that you want to put the mask on, so we have layer 2 active. Don't double click, single click. Go down to this button down here at the bottom, which is a mask, it's a little square with a circle in it, and click it. And you can see the layer changes and now has two thumbnails on the layer instead of just one. The second one is the mask. And you can see by these little tiny borders around the thumbnail which one is active. That just means which one we're going to be working on. Once you have a mask on, it's usually best just to stay on the mask because you don't want to alter the original image, you just want to alter the mask. Now, what the mask is doing is initially, by default, a field of white. It's basically a, a layer that Photoshop puts over the current image on this layer, and anywhere where there is white on that image, it's going to show, and anywhere where there is black, it's going to hide. So I can show you here. Um, so I'm going to choose my brush tool, which is B, by default. My cursor is a little big right now, so I can go up here, adjust the size, drop it down to 32 or so, and I'm going to keep the hardness down to about half, so it's a little bit softer around the edges. You can see in my color palette I have black chosen right now, and I have my uh, mask layer selected. And when I start coloring in, it looks like I'm just erasing. But if you look up at our thumbnail here, you can see that we're coloring in with black. Now say if I'm coloring here and I accidentally cut into his hair, fear not. Switch your color back to white, which you can do by clicking this little button here. Or a shortcut is just hitting X, which automatically switches the foreground and background colors. 
So now that we have white, I'm just going to paint that back in, and it's like nothing ever happened. So now what we can do is just go back to black and paint out as close to the hair as possible. See now that we have that soft edge, we're getting a little bit close to the edges without actually touching them. And we're getting those stars to get nice and close to his hair. Now, if you don't want to go back up to the brush palette every time you want to change the size or hardness, shortcut is just the brackets on your keyboard to change the size of the brush. And if you hold shift and hit the brackets, you'll change the hardness of the brush. So I'm going to shrink this down and really work into these little areas here. Just so we get a nice little illusion that Einstein is floating in space. Because we all know he liked to do that. And I'm going to get rid of these edges of his hair. Give him a nice little haircut. And we'll kind of go in and out. Make it look like a little bit more of a natural hair shape. And now here's the other thing that masks can do that are pretty powerful. If you go to keyboard, and if you're on a PC, you hit Alt. And if you're on a Mac, you hit Option. Hold it and click on the thumbnail of your mask. And you can see here that we get to see our thumbnail close up. And here's a few spots of black that I missed, so I'm just going to fill those in. Now the other thing that you can do besides just going in and really nitpicking the mask when you're in here is you can apply filters to it. So if you want your mask to have a little less sharp of an edge, you can go in, gauge and blur it a bit. That's a little too much. Now here what I'm doing is I'm looking at the mask while I'm doing it, which is kind of dumb for my purposes here, but I just wanted to demonstrate that the filter affects only the mask. So I'm going to cancel out of this before applying it, and I'm going to click back onto the image to make it active so I can see it again, and then I'm going to click back onto the mask thumbnail so that that's what I'm working on again. So I'm going to put filter and gauge and blur again. And now we can see exactly what it's doing, and we can still see the preview of the mask in here, which is kind of nice. So I'm not going to put this too high up. Uh, we're actually almost very good, but I'm going to jump it to almost three, not quite. And there we go. That's looking nice. Einstein is nice and blended in. Uh, I'll actually color in this little side corner over here with some black. And there we go. So now we have Einstein on a star field. And if you wanted to blend him in a little bit more, you could drop him just such, maybe down to 95-ish. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so next up, uh, I'm going to pretty up this star field with a nebula that I found. Copy and paste. Once again, the image is a little too big, so we're going to zoom out. Since the bounding box is going to be big, I'm going to hit Control T, hold Shift, and shrink that down. Now I kind of want the nebula to take up most of the image, so I'm going to leave it a bit big. And now if you let go of Shift and you go outside of the bounding box, you'll see the cursor change to the rotate icon which lets you rotate it. And if you're holding shift while you're doing this, it will snap it to the 45 degrees uh, and 90 degrees and a few in between on a very rigid scale. So I'm going to put this at a diagonal so I get a bit more of a dynamic thing going on here. I'm going to stretch this so the nebula takes up as much room as possible. I'm going to hit enter accept the changes and zoom back in. And what I'm going to do here is, well, I think I'm going to keep it over Einstein because I wanted to interact with him as well. So we're going to switch this to a screen mode so it's going to hide all but the brightest parts of our image here. You can see we get that nice little 
effect on Einstein. And then just move this so it's dispersed a little more evenly. And we're going to drop down the opacity just a bit so it's not quite as strong. Okay, so we're going to drop this down just a little bit more in opacity just so it doesn't look like he sneezed as much. Or maybe we'll just move it over. There we go. That looks great. We can even bump the opacity back up. That looks excellent. Alright, so now we're going to get Earth in there as well. Copy. Paste. And we're going to shrink the Earth down a bit with the transform. And in the original image I showed you, we kind of had the Earth centered, but I'm going to kind of have it off to the side here. Now, what we want to do is get rid of this black here. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to Multiply. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Screen. And you can see the Earth is kind of fading into the cosmos there, which we don't quite want. We'd like the Earth to be a little more prominent. So let's make a new layer and drag it under the earth. Here we have black as our color. Let's select the brush with B. And just color in dark under the earth. And that will let it pop without really letting us lose our border there. I'm going to make this brush a little bigger because I'd like the earth to have a little bit of a a little bit of a black edge to it. And you can see when you have your brush soft, you don't need to put the cursor right to the edge of where you want to paint. It's going to be kind of pushing out a little bit beyond that cursor. And the effect is a little more prominent the bigger the brush is. So there we have Earth. Earth is looking a little weird color-wise, so let's uh, fix that up. I'm going to go into Curves, Image Adjustment and curves, which is also done by Control or Command M. So an easy way to use curves is to click and make an S curve. And that usually bumps up a contrast really nicely, but otherwise I'd recommend just playing around. The less control points you have, uh, the more uh, wieldy that this tool seems to be, but if you want you can really get into making a lot more points. You can even go in by the color, so if I wanted the earth to be a little less blue. Uh, just drag one of the points here. Let's see what it does. There we go. Alright, so we're almost done here. So let's get this quote back up. And it's kind of dark, so we can't really see it. So let's change the text tool. You can see where the text tool is looking like this with a small box around the cursor. That means if you click it, it's going to create a new text layer. But if it changes to just the cursor, that means it's going to edit an existing text layer. So let's highlight all of our text. And also hit Ctrl or Command A to select all of your text. And click this box up here. And we'll just set this to a nice white text. And we can make this a bit bigger. Alright, so that's looking a little bit off. So what we're going to do is control panel up here. We don't need the paragraph as much because the controls for this are mostly up here. But we do need the character box. Text has a few things. There's one thing called kerning, which is the space between the letters. So you can see if I make this kerning setting bigger, space between each letter gets very big. So you can either do this numerically, do the drop down box. Uh, if you put it to zero it's going to do auto to what the text is normally set to, or you can click and drag on this graphic of the letters and set it to whatever you like. This other one on top is called letting and if you set it to auto you'll see that it spaces the lines nice and evenly. 
And we're going to want it a little bit closer than that. So we're going to click and drag on that icon. There we go. And we're going to set it like that. So now I'm just going to take a moment and see if I can kind of even this out. So we have a nice square text box. Sometimes it takes a little bit to really uh, get this going. But that's how design work goes. There we go, we got kind of a nice stair step going down, right justified. So we're going to hit OK. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And text will always size up nicely because it is vector and it is not um, going to blur. It's just the nature of vector graphics is they can be scaled up and down infinitely without loss of quality. It's pretty nice. Um, so we have this all set except, you know, we got the stars kind of shining behind it and it's kind of blocking it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice little outer glow behind the letters. Now we can do this manually if we want, making a new layer and blurring it and placing it, or what we can do is double click on the layer itself. It's going to bring up our layer styles menu. We're going to click on outer glow. You can see that that's already made it outer glow, but that's not the color we want, so let's go into the settings. Click on outer glow and you can see the color for it is right here. I'm going to change it to black. And now it's not showing up right now because by default the blending mode, similar to what the layer blending modes are, is set to screen. So we're going to set it to normal so we can see the black. And you can see it start to pop out a little there and separates our letters nicely. We're going to leave the opacity at 75%. The spread and the size is what we really want to fool with here. So when we fool with the spread, you can see the thickness of the initial glow goes up and down. And if we do the size, the feathering of that thickness gets bigger. So we want to keep this a little bit subtle, just so it stands out just enough against space that we can read it. Bump the size up a bit. And the spread. You know, if the sliders are a little too wild for you, you can type it in by number. Hit OK. So we're almost there, but I'd kind of like to give it one more little, uh, little bit of flair. So let's actually copy this layer of text. You can either do that by dragging it down to the new layer icon, and it makes a new one, or you can also do the shortcut of Command or Control J, and it will duplicate the layer that you have selected. So let's right click on this layer, and click Rasterize. And that means we're turning our layer um, from editable text into just a graphic. So once you rasterize text, you can no longer edit it, but you do have a few more options with what you can do with it. I'm going to turn off the effects because we don't want the glow on this. And I'm going to hit Command T. We're going to make it bigger. And this is going to result in some quality loss, but trust me on this one. Sometimes you want some quality loss. No, just make this up here big enough so that we're seeing nothing but text. But we can still get the sense that it's the original quote. So we've got that here. And we're going to change it to black. So we're going to do Command or Control I. And that is the inverse of colors. Uh, so it'll make anything on screen into a negative if you have colors, or just black to white if you have black and white. Now let's finish this up. Go to the layer blending mode. Set that to overlay. Drop the opacity down a bit. And there you go. You've got a nice little Facebook cover of Einstein.